evening welcome back everybody to another beautiful sunday meaning another great episode of baggage claim with jazz and charles the only show where we teach you how to claim the bag secure the bag and most importantly protect, protect the, the bag. bag i'm charles i'm jazz and we are here at the henderson financial group we are co-workers and cousins and today we have another wonderful episode of baggage claim for you we're super excited about it <laughs> <laughs> i'm not gonna lie this is not that exciting <laughs> this one's not that exciting it's about retirement accounts yeah, but <laughs> we'll try you know keep you in the tank keep yes. you awake for this one but uh not too many people get excited about retirement accounts no they don't they don't but uh it's necessary mm -hmm. it's information that we all need to know and i feel like with retirement accounts they get put on the back burner mm -hmm. by us young folk mm -hmm. because because um, we are all about the now, the here and now, who wants to think about retirement. Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, um, it's really setting yourself up so that you don't have to work forever. That should be really interesting to everyone. I mean, it should, but there's so much interesting things going on. Like 2020, that I call it like the year of Robin Hood, right? Mm -hmm. So that's when so many people got introduced to the stock market. They got mm -hmm. introduced to options, all type of trading and margin accounts. That's, that's so much more fun and it's so much more validating to see quick returns than a retirement account because <laughs> most people's retirement accounts have been in you know existence longer than we've been alive absolutely right and those people who've had those retirement accounts that have been in existence for as long as we've been alive i'm mm -hmm. sure they are thanking their younger selves for uh handling that early mm -hmm. you know it's one of those investments where you can't be mad at yourself in the future if you're young and you get a retirement account right now your older self is going to thank you and not only if you get one but if you are really like contributing to that account and you're really planning for your future i mean me mm -hmm. <laughs> me i'm not trying to work forever i'm not trying to re retire at like 60 something i want to live a life of leisure i'm gonna quit my day job the minute i can oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> yes because like you know this i feel like our generation is more so focused less on like work and career mm. and um fulfillment and making money i think so too and you know a retirement account will help with that but for some reason, we don't see it like that. Like when we see, we picture retirement accounts. I know a lot of people think, okay, Social Security, 60-something, 70-something. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I feel like, you know, with the Internet and how things are now, there's a whole new way. There's a new way of doing things. You don't have to do it the same old way. And like you say, people could retire at 45, 50 years old if they do the right things now and set themselves up. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think uh, it takes for young people to really understand how important retirement accounts are? I think it may be a change in perspective mm -hmm. because, again, you hear retirement account, it just sounds like old. You know, no offense <laughs> <laughs> to the all. older audience, but it just sounds like something I don't have to deal with right now, retirement. I just started working. Mm -hmm. But uh, you don't want to work forever. And even if you're thinking, you know, it's something to put on the back burner and you're really excited for it possible investments right now that can give you returns like sooner and that you can you don't have to wait until you're a certain age to touch the money mm -hmm. you know that's okay and that's good that's important we <coughs> are always trying to set ourselves up but you don't want to neglect your future self so maybe just right now even if it's not uh, putting money or contributing to a retirement account it's learning about the retirement mm. accounts because there are so many different types of retirement accounts and in this episode we're just going to talk about the Roth and the IRA but uh, there are so many and there are going to be so many more to come from so us. So many so many and I'm glad you said learn about it now because everybody I know who you know who's done something great they put that into Basically, they put so much forethought into it. They put thought in before it actually came to that point. They mm -hmm. learned about it. You know, they grew. They were around it. And then once you see them at that point, you think, OK, this is where they are. Mm -hmm. But no, so much went into it before that. Mm -hmm. You know, you won't just get financial independence by accident. That's something that you have to teach yourself about, learn about. And there's so much preparation that goes into it. And this is a great, great, great place to start. Yes, there. That that's so true. Wow, Charles, yeah. that was so wise of you. <laughs> so wise today, this Sunday. Oh, man. <laughs> wise every day. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, yeah, no, but he's right. <laughs> he's he's mm-hmm. wise and he's right. Uh, anything you see, most things you see that are like really well done or well like executed and mm-hmm. like, wow, things are all so lined up. Sometimes it just appears like that's the way it is, but really that person's been working behind the scenes. So if you know someone who's retired early and they're living that life of leisure that I will be living, mm-hmm. uh, it's because they started early. Absolutely. Speak it into existence. Absolutely. So before we kick it off, I just want to say good evening, Miss Brown. Hi, Miss Brown. I hope you're doing well, and I hope everybody out there is doing well also. Yeah. Uh, like Jazz said, we'll be talking to you guys today about the IRA and the Roth IRA. And, you know, it's going to be like a retirement series. We're going to kick that off today. Mm-hmm. The reason we're starting with the Roth and the IRA, I feel like those are the simplest, easiest, most basic ones, you know, yeah. like the building blocks. Mm-hmm. Those are like level one. Mm-hmm. There are more interesting ones. I shouldn't say that. Let me not try <laughs> <laughs> There no, are other are. retirement accounts, but these are just the basics. So if you know nothing about retirement accounts at all, this is definitely the episode for you because we are starting with baby steps, like we say here on Baggage Claim mm-hmm. and at the Henderson Financial Group. We're going to break it down to you like a six-year-old. So we're going to take our time, stick with us. We've got some great examples, and uh, we really want to pass this knowledge to our people. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so kicking right. it off. Yes. So, individual retirement account. Beautiful. That is an IRA. Mm-hmm. Individual being for you, retirement, money for later, an account. And uh, the age-old question, this question confuses a lot of people sometimes, so I want to bring it to the forefront first so we can get an understanding of the structure okay. of these retirement accounts. What do you put inside of the IRA? That's a good question. Okay. Uh, you know, now that I'm here, I understand it deeply what goes on. But beforehand, mm-hmm. I did not know what goes into an IRA. I thought that was the actual investment itself. Me too. Uh, like just the retirement account. So uh, let's break it down like this. Mm-hmm. We're visual learners here. Yes. I think of the IRA or any retirement account as a drawer. That's what I picture because, you know, any drawer that you have, you put different things in it. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. follow along. You put, you know t-shirts in it you could put underwear you could put socks in different drawers it doesn't matter Mm -hmm. but the retirement account is like a drawer and in that drawer you know you could put whatever you want into it like securities so you could put cash in stocks bonds whatever it may be the only difference is with each different drawer the only difference is the rules and regulations that go into it Mm -hmm. does that does that make sense yes I'm following you. Okay, okay. <laughs> we have drawers, and these drawers are the different types of retirement accounts. Mm-hmm. And inside those retirement accounts, you have uh, that's where the money resides. Exactly. That's right. one way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> so you got your annuities in there, maybe, mm-hmm. some stocks in there. So the retirement account in itself is not the investment, Mm-mm. it's just the drawer exactly. for those investments. So in different retirement accounts, let's say the IRA, you can have. Tesla stock, Apple stock, whatever you want, or you can have different mutual funds and it could be the same exact holdings in that, you know, traditional IRA drawer, Mm -hmm. same as the Roth IRA, Mm -hmm. you know, they could be the exact Mm -hmm. same. So it doesn't matter what you put in it as much. The difference is how it's treated by especially our best friend. Uncle Sam. Oh, so it goes <laughs> back to them taxes. Always goes back it to taxes. Always goes back to the taxes. All right, so again, a little recap. We got the two, the two drawers. Mm-hmm. In this case, it's two because we're comparing two different types of accounts, the Roth and the traditional IRA. So in these two drawers, uh, anything can be in them. Not anything. I shouldn't say anything, but you got your money in mm-hmm. them in different uh, investment vehicles. And the main difference is how they're treated tax-wise. Exactly. Okay, so... To explain the difference in the taxes, Charles and I have a wonderful story. (laughs) It's a little lengthy. Stick with us. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's definitely a aha moment kind of story. Yeah, so this is how we'll break it down. Uh, The farmer story. The farmer story. Um, All right, so this is a story my dad tells all the time. Um, he likes to call it, what is it, the, the, the story of the seed in the harvest yeah, or something? something like that. Yeah. <laughs> the farmer's story. All right, so I am a store owner. Okay. Um, I don't know <clears throat> what they call the kind of stores. Let's call it a farm store. A owner. farm store. Yeah. I'm a farm store owner. I may not be the owner. I'm just the clerk. Whatever. Okay. I'm selling the seeds <laughs> in the store. Mm-hmm. And Charles is a farmer, and you have a fellow colleague farmer yeah, with you. Friend, associate. Yes, he's also a farmer. So Charles comes in. You want to buy some seeds. Mm-hmm. Uh, in this seeds, there's 100 seeds in this pack. Okay. And I'm going to charge you $10 for it. That's the price of the pack of seeds. So for 100 seed pack, $10? Yes. Okay, I'm following. Okay. 
but I'm also going to charge you some tax. You'll get a hundred. Mm. You get a hundred. What is it? Watermelon seeds. Well, yeah. Let's do watermelon juicy. Okay. All right. So you'll, you'll be able to grow a hundred watermelon with this pack of seeds, but it costs ten dollars. Um, I, of course, me being me in America, mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to take some taxes. Naturally. I'm on twenty percent over here. Okay, a so, little hefty. But yes. Do you I want to you. pay your twenty percent taxes now or later? I can choose. You can choose. Up to you. So I either pay my twenty percent tax right now, or I pay it after I've already grown and sold. Just know that I want twenty percent now or later. I'm going to push it off to later. You're going to defer. I'm going to defer. Defer those taxes. Absolutely. All right. Now, Charles' uh, friend farmer, mm -hmm. <laughs> he is going to ask for the same pack of seeds. Okay. $10. But instead of deferring his taxes, he's going to pay his taxes on site. Yes, because he doesn't understand how math works. <laughs> so he's going to pay $12 mm -hmm. for his pack of seeds because 20%. So he's giving me two extra dollars. Okay. So he paid 12, you paid 10. Mm -hmm. All right. Fast forward. We had a nice rainy season. Absolutely. Charles is out there in the sun mm -hmm. working his watermelon. <laughs> yes, and, and my family is so excited. Yes. We grew the watermelon seeds. Mm -hmm. They are now huge watermelons. I got a hundred of them. Juicy. I'm going to sell each one for $5. <laughs> So, you know what? My competitor, he had a good season, too. We all ate. But me <laughs> and my family, we are ecstatic. We yes. are ready. Yes. That is $500 coming in. 100 watermelon. Sell each one for five. Got my money. Christmas came early for the kids. Sorry. <laughs> I got to stop you there, just like the IRS do. Okay. Um, you have to pay me taxes. Remember, you deferred them. That's true. Yes. All right. Take you $2. Now, $498. No, 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 no. Uh, two percent of five hundred dollars is not two hundred. It's not two dollars. It's a hundred dollars. So you don't owe me two dollars anymore. You owe me a hundred dollars. You didn't say now. that. You told me I'm paying twenty percent tax on the seed, not the harvest. I told you you were paying me twenty percent. That's what I said. That's not fair. Well, is life fair, Charles? No, it's not. But you have <laughs> to break that down. There are so many people who are thinking, you know. I don't have to pay taxes on the back end. That just doesn't seem fair. Mm. But I asked you if you wanted to pay your taxes now or you wanted to defer them. Just like I asked your uh, farmer colleague there, and he actually paid his taxes up front. So now he gets to walk away with his full 500 He don't mean nothing. So he paid $2, mm -hmm. and I'm going to pay you $100. Yes, because you deferred your taxes. You put it off, and that's just mm. what happens. And okay, because wow. I am Uncle Sam, I'm mm -hmm. going to do what Uncle Sam do. Mm. I'm going to collect my money. That's theory. But <laughs> unfortunately, that is how things work. That's the difference between the Roth and the traditional IRA. Mm -hmm. The traditional IRA, you're deferring taxes. So you're not paying, you know, your taxes up front on the seed, meaning every dollar you make. You put the money in your IRA. Mm -hmm. You get your annuities, your stocks, your bonds, or just keep it in cash, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And then towards the end, you're going to get hit with the taxes. Yeah, because... When you paid, when your farmer colleague, mm -hmm. I don't know why I keep saying that, when your <laughs> farmer friend paid his taxes up front, he was paying that 20% on a smaller amount of money. Mm. So he, he, that's just $2 for him. But when you defer it, now you're paying taxes on that growth. Mm. So can you imagine the growth, especially if you're good at what you do and you're contributing contributing to mm -hmm. your account and you are you know your, your money's growing that's just more excitement for the irs because you deferred it and now i get to get taxes off a bigger lump sum of money it is and so i feel like i kind of know the answer my question would be how many people do you think know the difference between the roth and the ira the reason i ask is because you know we have clients come in all the time <clears throat> and it's always a shocked look on their face when we tell them oh no this isn't all of your money. You still have to pay oh, taxes. That's the 20, worst. 25, whatever it may be. Yeah, I you don't think like that. think most people know? No, I don't think most people know. Especially, mm -hmm. I know by experience that most people don't know because then you have to break it to them like, oh, no, this is, you didn't you didn't pay taxes on this yet. And that's mm -hmm. like, oh, snap, you know. And sometimes it's really significant. And that is upsetting because you're looking at this retirement account for years and you're looking at this amount of money for years and mm -hmm. you're checking and you're checking and you're like, this is what I got. And you forget <laughs> that you defer those taxes just as Charles forgot so yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the main <laughs> difference right there uh, you don't want to defer those taxes because mm -hmm. they're gonna have to come out anyway they will and that is why we push people towards the raw so mm -hmm. you know the seed example that we just gave seed harvest whatever it may be 
That's actually common for most retirement accounts. You're always going to pay taxes either up front or on the back end. That's why we tell people about the Roth a lot of times or even the IUL. You can go back and watch another episode because you get the gum off of your shoe. Mm. You know, something we talk about here a lot is critical thinking. Mm -hmm. The U.S. is about, what, $27 trillion in debt now. We're still at all time, just about all time lows in the tax rate. Eventually, we're going to have to pay taxes on our money. Mm -hmm. You kind of want to get the gum off of your shoe now. Handle That's kind of why we push tax, not tax deferred accounts, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You definitely want to handle it early, uh, get the hard stuff out of the way. And then after that, the growth that's yours is just it's beautiful. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And then so, OK, that kind of explained the major difference between the two drawers or the two types of accounts is how they're taxed. And then there are some other rules and regulations there. Um, are we going with IRA first or Roth? We could go with the Roth. Okay. We'll explain the Roth. So the Roth, you already know that is the one that's not tax deferred. You pay taxes up front. But, you know, some things other people don't know. This is actually your own account outside of your job. So you can kind of control what happens. Uh, you can put up to about $6,000 per year. Mm -hmm. If you're over age 50, you can do something called catch-up contributions where you're putting in seven thousand dollars a maximum per year mm -hmm. does that make sense yeah so there's a max on it mm -hmm. they're not letting you just dump all your money whenever you want no nah, no nah. okay so it's definitely regulated mm -hmm. and there are other accounts that are not so heavily regulated absolutely but that's the roth <laughs> yeah. and so with the roth also uh, something most people don't know you actually can't touch your money until age 59 and a half mm -hmm. or else you're going to be taxed on that money and you're going to have to pay a 10 percent distribution now, the way I always think of it is like a child. Mm -hmm. It's like your parents telling you, you can take, you know, you could get your uh, cookies out the cookie jar, mm -hmm. but after 10 at night. Mm. That's the imagery I always get. Do mm -hmm. you see it? Yes, I see it. <laughs> it just sounds like more control, <laughs> more exactly. rules, more regulations. And so it's interesting because with the Roth, you have to, um, you paid your taxes early already, but then if you want to touch your money, they're still going to try to get you. For the most part, too early. see, there's a loophole with the Roth that mm -hmm. you don't get with the IRA. Mm -hmm. You know, you can put in your money and uh, you can't touch it until age 59 and a half unless you're taking out what you put in. So mm -hmm. if I put $5,000 into my Roth IRA tomorrow mm -hmm. and then it grows to 10000 I can't touch, you know, you can't touch the, the growth. growth, but I can take out what I already put in. Mm -hmm. That's a loophole that the Roth has but that the IRA doesn't have. Mm, okay, so if you put in, you can you can take out what you put in before 59 and a half, mm -hmm. but after 59 and a half, you can't touch that. You can, you're allowed to touch that growth. Exactly. But after 59 and a half. Exactly, and so mm -hmm. that's kind of the reason why the, the retirement account is good, but that's why we like to have diversification because I personally don't like to have something where I don't have too much control over my money and mm -hmm. I can't get it if I need to, if that makes sense. That's what it sounds like. It sounds like a control thing. Exactly. They're still really, they still got their foot on your neck a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, think of it like this. They are doing it to protect people from themselves. They feel, mm. you know, Americans don't really save. We want you to put your money away for retirement and don't touch it. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to penalize you if you do, because mm -hmm. if not, I feel like most people would honestly dip into it. Yes. That is true. Mm -hmm. I agree. People do like to dip into the accounts. And if it is for retirement, it's for retirement, I guess. It's, that's what makes it a retirement account. Um, all right. That's that's interesting, yeah. right? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's the wrong. Very, very fun yes. retirement accounts. Yes, yes. All right. So now we got the IRA. Yes. And the IRA is the biggest retirement account. That is the one that most people have. I feel like, you know, if you don't know anything about retirement accounts, you, mm. you've heard of the IRA. Yeah. You, you know, know something about an IRA. You hear about the 401k, 403b, oh, whatever 401k it may be. Sure. Yeah. But the IRA, that is where the most money in America is held. Mm. And because that's the one where... You know, most people actually don't have corporate accounts like the 401k, those type of retirement accounts. Most people have to do things themselves. Mm. That is where the IRA comes into play. That's where we can kind of have control. You know, mm -hmm. you do what you want to do. You can't touch it early, mm -hmm. but you can decide what goes into it. Because it's your individual retirement account. Exactly. Just gotcha. like that drawer example. You could put your socks in. You could put your, you know, underclothes. You could put whatever you want. If you want to mm -hmm. put a raincoat or a jacket you do what you need. That mm -hmm. is your drawer, your retirement account. Mm -hmm. So the traditional IRA, like the Roth IRA, you get penalized if you touch your money too early. 
Yes. So before age 59 and a half, you can't take your money out of the IRA. Mm -hmm. Only difference is with the Roth, you know, you can take out what you put in with the IRA. Once you put it in, that's it right there. <laughs> like, that is it. Uncle Sam is going to be like, ah, remember you didn't pay no taxes, especially. He is going to take your money from the harvest, <laughs> not from the growth, yes. from the harvest. Yeah, and you don't want that. <laughs> and then because you hadn't paid taxes yet and you're mm -hmm. like all right fine i won't touch the money after a certain age they're like you better start taking some money out so we can collect our taxes See, that's the crazy part right they got you <laughs> they need that money yeah. so you put your money in let's just say you know you grow it to we speak prosperity here prosperity age only. 70 you grew it to five million dollars in your ira you balling you got something to look forward to but you know the tax is going to hit you mm-hmm yeah. You don't need the money right now, so you figure, you know what, I won't even touch it right mm -hmm. now. I don't need the money. I'm going to just leave it right there. Give this to my children. Not my on kids, Uncle Sam's kids. watch. Not no, no, on Uncle no, no, Sam's no. watch. <laughs> He's like, you better start taking some of that money out so I can finally get my taxes. Because remember, you deferred those taxes, so he never got paid. And so now he's like, okay, start so I can get my money. And so that is, they don't make you do that with the Roth. No, no, no. Because they already the got Roth. paid. So they don't IRA, care. <laughs> they make you. They call it required minimum distribution. Not they gave it an official name. Mm -hmm. You know, required minimum distribution. Required. Once you hit a seventy-two, you got to take your money out. Mm -hmm. You have to take it out. No questions. No excuses. And you will be taxed on that money. Why? Because Uncle Sam needs their money. Mm -hmm. Like we said, we got this huge amount of debt and not playing. Give me my money. This mm -hmm. is what you owe us. This is the contract. You mm -hmm. know. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds kind of messed up. But it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. There are better ones. There are better retirement account types. Absolutely. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll definitely get into down. that. Yeah, we'll have to get into those. You're going to yeah. want to know more about those. But um, um, just to give it a little recap. Mm -hmm. So with the IRA, um, it's the same thing with the Roth. You yeah. can put up to $6,000 for the year. Mm -hmm. After age 50, you can put up to $7,000 per year. Um once you put the money in, you can't take it out or you'll be penalized 10% and you'll pay taxes. Mm -hmm. um, you have to take your money by age 72. We mm -hmm. call it required minimum distribution. Mm -hmm. You don't have to take all of it, but you have to start taking money out. And mm -hmm. the government actually tells you how much you can take out. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Put on your neck. They tell you you have to take <laughs> at least this much out. That's a mess. And just for clarity, mm -hmm. we're saying contribution, distribution, contribution, distribution. Oh, yeah. Please yes. define that. Contribution is what you're putting in. You're contributing to your account. A distribution is uh, what you're taking out. So it's that retirement account distributing money to you. And so that's where R and D, that required minimum distribution, they'll literally tell you a dollar amount for how much you must take out or you will be penalized. Absolutely. And mind you, you know, the reason that we're telling them about this is because we want them to have this knowledge. It's important Absolutely. to know about it. And one thing that you may not know, you can actually start an IRA right now. You know, I actually know a few friends. They contribute to their Roth IRAs. You know, mm -hmm. they'll call me, ask me, hey, Roth or traditional? I tell them, you know, do a Roth. You know, if you feel like you made a mistake, you can always take your money out mm -hmm. and it's going to be tax free later in your life. If you're making money now, if you're earning money legally, legally, you can actually open up a Roth IRA right now. Do you know a lot of drug dealers or something? Nah. <laughs> legally. <laughs> We're in Miami. This is the fraud capital. Oh. So if you're making that legal money, you can actually start an IRA right now, put your money into it. And, you know, you see your friends trading. You can trade for your own Roth IRA account if you want. Mm. Now, I'm not necessarily advising that. I'm just saying you have options right now more than you think you may have. And it, anything is better than just saying, like, I don't need to know nothing about retirement because I promise you, you're going to want to retire one promise day. That. I promise you're going to want to retire. <laughs> no one, I don't know. I shouldn't say no one wants to work forever. How many people do you hear say, oh, man, 30 snuck up on me, 40 snuck up on me? Yeah. Apparently, if you ask older people, they say time flies. Oh, yeah. And honestly, it probably has flown for me. Oh, so I would some say of these too. comments. Oh, hey, man. Cousin Terry. I'm really country. I said, Cousin Terry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Miss Green, how you doing? Uh, Miss Sylvain, how you doing? Hi, Miss Sylvain. Hey, Mrs. Redhead. Hey, Mrs. Redhead. What's up, Temp? How hey, you doing? thanks, Temp. Auntie Becky, how you doing? Oh, my father. <laughs> my father. Why is it important for a young person to start saving for retirement early? You want to take this one? Yes, uh, because okay, okay. I'm going to paint a little picture here. Oh. I see myself hmm, probably like 45 traveling mm. yacht hopping <laughs> island hopping <laughs> 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 i 
And do you know who's not calling me? Who's that? My day job. You know mm. what I'm saying? I'm retired. I'm chilling. I'm living a good life. I definitely have my investments working for me because you always want money working for you on the side. Absolutely. But I feel like we are stepping into an age now of uh, life is short. And we mm. cannot just dream of labor all day, every day, unless it's a passion of yours, for yeah. sure. Yeah, if you want to be a doctor forever, go be a doctor forever. I get that. But I honestly feel like, why wouldn't you want to plan for your retirement? You definitely want to have a plan that way. When you wake up one day and you do leave that job and you check that retirement account you have, you're like, oh, snap, I didn't even put any attention into this. And mm. now my salary has stopped. And uh, I'm... I'm living off of this retirement account that I've neglected or that I failed to uh, put any attention or energy into. So, yeah, you don't want to you don't want to make your future self mad no, or regretful. You definitely don't. And mind you, you know, <clears throat> it's easy to put it on the back burner with the IRA it's a little different from other retirement accounts. There's no matching. You know, we'll talk later about that. The 401ks. Sometimes people get matching, meaning their employers match their money. If you're putting in five hundred dollars. They may put in $500 a month, too, with the IRA. You don't get that individual retirement account that's your money. Don't forget, you know. And, you know, something you said, it makes sense. I feel like this should have been a main point. If you don't have the kind of job that's going to give you a 401k, it's your responsibility to plan for your retirement. And even if you've got the job that's going to give you that 401k, it's definitely something you still want to put some energy into. And uh, you want to get your knowledge up so you can check it out. Don't just leave it to the people to take care of you because no one's going to take care of you like you. Absolutely. And if you get an extra money, you know, it's not always best to spend it. You want to think for the future. You want to reward your current self, but also reward your future self because you're mm-hmm. going to be happy in the future. Mm-hmm. Now, one thing I wanted to touch on, you always talk about retiring early, 45, 50. <laughs> I'm kind of on the other spectrum. I want to work for a very long time because I feel so blessed to have been born in the late 20th century with computers. I don't have to necessarily be a sharecropper or <laughs> Whatever, 150, 200 years ago, I would have been doing. Now, you know, thankful to my ancestors, I get to sit on a computer and just work. Blessings. I love it. But with that being said, even though I want to work for a long time, make money, I still put aside money to plan for the future because you never know what's going to happen. You know, Mm -hmm. God forbid, I don't want anything to happen to me. But if 2020 taught us anything is to live for the moment and prepare for the future. Exactly. That's what I got from it. I hope you guys got the same lesson from 2020. Absolutely. You'll never regret being prepared. No, never. That's just, that's it. That's how. (laughs) Think about those kids. I I knew kids who were preparing for college and middle school. Oh, Talk about overprepared. Yeah, and then we all finally got to college (laughs) and they're like graduating, like on to our masters. Yeah, 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 this and that. (laughs) You can never go wrong with planning. There's no such thing as overplanning as long as you still execute. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, For sure. Um, What retirement accounts are we talking about next episode? Have we planned that? Yeah, I think we're talking about the 401k, 403b, 457, uh, because we have a lot of teachers, mm-hmm. corporate workers, yeah. you know, even nonprofit workers mm-hmm. and then of course with the 457 government workers. Mm-hmm. So we really want to give you all as much information as possible. It's retirement, stay awake. You're going to need it. It's important. Uh, yeah. We just want to give our information. Yeah. So if you uh, if you fall into that category that your family and friends know, share this video if you know you don't have you and your peers don't have the kind of jobs where you get those benefits or those retirement accounts automatically. Uh, it's left up to you. So share, 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 share the knowledge. And uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. Absolutely. And I do want to give one more recap. I'm sorry. I just ended it before you. <laughs> <two, laughs> My bad. Two important notes. One, with the Roth IRA, you, what you put in, mm-hmm. everything that you put in, you can always take that back out. Mm-hmm. Tax-free, penalty-free at any time. That's one. Two, CARES Act is over. You mm-hmm. cannot access your account early now before mm. age 59 and a half penalty free that's when over did that with. end like december, 20, december 31st, december 31st. 2020. Yeah. i just wanted to leave those two just so there's no confusion at yeah. all all right so i'm good how about I'm you good thank you everyone thanks a lot you guys enjoy the playoffs have a good have one. A great one all the playoffs on yeah oh. all right have a good one <laughs>